Hello and welcome everyone to this week live with Dr. McDougall. I'm Gustavo Tolosa from Dallas and today we have a very special webinar with not only Dr. McDougall but his lovely wife Mary. Mary is the co-founder of the McDougall program and of course Dr. McDougall is the founder of the McDougall program and the writer of many best-selling books and of course one of the best sellers is the starch solution and the new book it's coming up now in, in September, so we're really excited about that. And without further ado, I want to welcome both of you, Dr. McDougall and Mary McDougall. How are you doing today? Well, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> we're together and I get all this help today. <laughs> all right, well. I really have nothing to say. <laughs> I can't believe that for some no, reason. No, no, that's not true. He always has something to say. Yeah. Well, uh, I was going to—I was going to say we did the dedication to the new book, yes. the healthiest diet on the planet. I just got—I uh, uh, got—I got a question um, uh, as to whether or not we were going to uh, be environmentally conscious and oriented in uh, the new book, and. Um, my answer was uh, this this book, the dedication, is dedicated to our seven grandchildren because uh, the world is ours to save. And uh, the healthiest diet on the planet, if it gets the acceptance it deserves, because it's going to have Dr. McDougall's color picture book in it and Mary's uh, pictures of Mary's some, resting. Some pictures of yeah. first, yeah. first time that uh, a um, book, 12 national best selling books, and the first time a book company has agreed to or, or asked us to do uh, pictures of, of Mary's recipes. And uh, what do you, how many recipes do you have in the Well, book? I think there's 50 recipes in the book, but there's only going to be 25 pictures. So, so it, it has the potential. The very uh, simply written uh, deals with things like uh, why are the other diets uh, a bunch of garbage is the word we agreed on, right? <laughs> uh, the, you know, the books like... Uh, 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 like the wheat belly and the grain brain and the paleo diet books. I, you know, I directly attack them uh, for you in a, in a, in a chapter and uh, also dealt with some of the governmental issues like, for example, why the USDA uh, uh, promotes Americans to eat as much as they can in terms of nutrients. And what they're talking about is protein and calcium and fat and even cholesterol. And uh, that's what the... Uh, Dietary Guidelines for Americans 2015-2020 is, and I think I also mentioned to you last week that the Chinese government and their dietary guidelines people to cut their meat consumption in half. So that gives you some, uh, some something to ponder about as to why uh, our longtime enemy, China, is uh, more <laughs> environmentally conscious and more concerned about their population than it is the friendly, always good United States of America. Uh, anyway, uh, the, the book directly deals with that, and uh, also the uh, color picture book is in there, as well as some of Mary's, some of Mary's new recipes. Yeah. So it'll be good. Uh, good. Uh, it's, I think September 28th, it'll be, it'll be available, uh, probably be sent out by Amazon, usually when they have a pub well, date. The, the Amazon, you can already pre-order it on Amazon. Yeah, right. Right. Well, I have to tell you that we were going to talk about simple recipes today, yeah. and all the new recipes in the in the cookbook are not simple. They're not. <laughs> no, they're, not. they're not like we usually use. Well, special like locations, usually. right? <laughs> well, but some some of them are simple, but not all of them are. So it's a little more elaborate for like a, like special occasions or yeah. uh, you know inviting people over or something. Yeah. Like that. Or or you know the other thing is uh, Gustavo is. Some people really like to spend time in the kitchen and cooking right. and being creative. Right. Uh, for Mary and I, it's, uh, as we've said so many times, oh, what, what did we have last night for dinner? We had um, sliced cooked new potatoes. And over that, we had a bean dish and that I made in my slow cooker. And I, <laughs> uh, I'll just show you, okay? Just let me show you. Yes, there is the um, is my the new the new toy. Trusty, at least twenty year old. No, you see the front. Oh, yeah, twenty oh, year the... old slow cooker. All right, <laughs> you hold it <laughs> on the front. It has a little dial here. Can you see that? Uh, yep. We it can, says uh, high, low, and warm or off. 
<laughs> I've been I've been using this thing for 20 years and the thing I like about it is it really makes meals simple because in the morning I throw in a package of dry beans I don't soak them overnight or anything else so I can choose any kind of bean that I want I kind of pick through it make sure there aren't any stones in there and then I add three times as much water as beans and I let it cook on high all day all day and then uh, oh maybe a half an hour before we're going to eat I throw in a can of any kind of chopped tomatoes right and that's because I ran out of the dehydrated tomatoes <laughs> from our garden last year right and I throw in my favorite seasoning oh I forgot to bring them I have to go get it why don't, you, why don't you go get it I'll go get it and then I I add um, a handful of greens that are chopped from our garden like kale or chard or something like that but you forgot we forgot to do that last night I forgot to do that last night but that's what we had over our potatoes and it probably took me five minutes to put it together well, and why don't you go get this place okay Yes, while you go that get that, I will ask you a question, Dr. McDougall, that has, someone has here. It is about um, people that have had already uh, bariatric bypass surgery. Uh, how do they do with this uh, way of eating? Okay, if you go to my uh, Star McDougallers, there's a Star McDougaller. Uh, his name is Mike Wilson. And it should be in alphabetical order. So you just go down the written star McDougallers, Mike Wilson. And I took care of him uh, initially about 35 years ago. And he'd had uh, a very severe intestinal bypass surgery. Uh, uh, they used to, I, I don't know how it compares to today, but it, uh, it was a very dramatic surgery. And he still couldn't lose the weight. In fact, he gained it all back. And you'll see some pictures that will just blow your mind. He was like 450 pounds. And he dropped to probably 160, 180, and it's been a phenomenal health since. Uh, you don't have to add extra nutrients because this is the most nutrient-dense diet there is. You know, if you think of nutrients as protein and calcium, which is all garbage from uh, uh, the uh, food industry uh, and uh, the uh, dietary guidelines, the USDA and so on, if you think that is uh, the nutrients you need, which we've told you so many times, uh, there's no such thing as protein or calcium deficiency, then you might worry about a, a starch-based diet. But you think about nutrients in terms of, uh, of real nutrients, vitamins and minerals and uh, phytonutrients that people need. This is the most nutrient-dense diet there is. So when I take care of people who've had uh, bariatric surgery, I don't supplement them with any extra vitamins. Uh, they just eat the diet as is. Uh, the, they're going to lose an awful lot of weight, which may be of concern because they don't have a, a proper intestinal tract anymore. So then maybe at that point, they might have to add some more uh, uh, calorie dense foods like nuts and seeds and avocados, but not until that point. Right, right. Okay, great. Because uh, people do wonder if uh, uh, if they have to do anything different or change anything because they've been through the torture of the medical business and how they can get on with uh, and, I, and I don't mean that some people aren't helped with bariatric surgery. Right. I mean, there are, there are lots of people who don't know about or will not follow the kind of diet that uh, Mary and I recommend. So, you know, the bariatric surgeons are there to help, and uh, they certainly do cause weight loss. They also cause a lot of trouble, a lot of sickness with, with, for right. people. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough life before and after bariatric surgery. Uh, and of course, bariatric surgery cures type two diabetes, but so does any weight loss program. We talked about that. You can wire your teeth together. <laughs> right. Lock exactly. the refrigerator. Lots of ways. <laughs> there are many ways to lose weight. Right. Dr. McDougall, are there any specific meals that a person with the Hashimoto's disease should consume on a regular basis or just well, no, not not really. Uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe it's due to eating foreign thyroids. And foreign thyroids, foreign thyroid glands, well, they come from pigs and cows. And right. how do you eat them? They're called hot dogs and sausages. <laughs> <laughs> the body reacts to those foreign thyroids. 
and uh, you know that's how it works out. Did you bring? I did. Okay. Yeah, right, I, have, I have a little story to tell about this too. This is called Kirkland Organic No Salt Seasoning. Can you put it a little closer to the a computer so we can see? Closer. Oh, there. All okay. right. And it has 21 organic spices and seasonings in it, no salt. And because you can see that's Kirkland, you can usually buy it at Costco. Right. Well, the last time I went to Costco, I couldn't find it. So I went on Amazon and I found it on Amazon and you can buy it oh, wow. on Amazon. So what else it's, you <laughs> it's my go to seasoning mixture whenever we have beans of almost any kind, except sometimes sometimes I use chili, but usually this I just I just dump in you just dump, <laughs> dump in a bunch and it, it covers everything. It's it covers so everything. Wow. Mm -hmm. What else did you get at Amazon uh, the other day that you were going to show us? <laughs> Oh, my what? You were going to show us something else that you got at Amazon. Oh, that I got on Amazon? Yeah, the new... Oh, but, I mean, it's really not fair because, I mean, it's really cool, but I haven't used it. You haven't used it yet? But Heather has. And Heather uses it all the time. Chef AJ uses it all the time. And everybody raves about it, so... Yes, I'm, I'm about to get mine as well. Uh, you're right, you, Chef you, AJ. You, you, huh? Do you do you use this? Uh, I, no, I'm getting it actually this week. It, Are you gonna get one? It's called an instant pot. It's amazing. That's all I can say. I've seen well, Chef AJ. It does. Well, I want I want to read what it does. <laughs> yeah, it's like it does everything. It, it makes soup. It, it does, does your laundry. <laughs> it does your laundry as it well. Slow cooks. It pressure cooks. It steams things, it makes porridge, it makes rice or multi-grain rice, it sautés. And so supposedly it does everything. So the next time yes. I do a webinar, I'll have tried it out. You're going to tell us exactly how and it works. There's something else that's really neat that I found. I don't usually advertise things, but look at this book that I found on Amazon. Oh. <laughs> it's this. OMG good instant pot meals plant based and oil free. Yes, yes, I know that book. That's really good. So, um it has a like 38 recipes and it's just a um really easy book to look through all simple right. things. It looks like the kinds of foods we eat. Yeah. Yeah, there's those um, are perfect. Um a good way to start with your instant pot. Your instant pot, very good. And then Chef Page A recipes, and, and she has some free videos so people can look at them on their, way, on their well, website. If, if Chef AJ loves it, it's got to be she, great. Yeah, well, we, did, we did a webinar on Tuesday, and she showed us all, the audience, how she puts that in her carry on on the plane. Oh. <laughs> wherever she goes, she travels with her instant. No, they, they, come, they come in several different sizes, and so I just yeah. bought a medium sized one. Oh, well, that's a medium size. Very good. Well, what else do you, what other types of cookware do you use, Mary? There? Well, you know, um, I use stainless steel if I'm going to be sauteing in any kind of liquid. Right. So if I'm going to saute, saute some onions or some peppers or something in some kind of a liquid like vegetable broth. Or water or something like that. I'll just use stainless steel. But if I'm going to be cooking something dry, like pancakes or burgers, where I don't need any liquid, I really need a good nonstick pan. And my favorite pans are made by Scan Pan. Right. This is a ceramic titanium. So it's not Teflon. It's a, a complete, completely different process. And nothing sticks to it. So this is my griddle. And I'll make burgers on this or pancakes. I can then, testify to that because I have that same one. And, that. It, and then I have a saute pan yeah. made uh -huh. by the same company. Um, scan pan, again, you can buy them on Amazon. And uh, for dry cooking, it's what you need. Right. right. 
It's perfect. They're really, nothing sticks to them. So. No, nothing sticks to them. <laughs> They're great. That's really good. And really? you don't want to know what I cook with? What do you cook with? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you are the lucky one. You you know, <laughs> what I do is I open a Dr. McDougall's uh, right food soup. <laughs> I put boiling water in. That's my cooking. Oh, that's your cooking. I, I, I just I, I tell you, thank goodness for Mary. <laughs> thank otherwise, goodness for Mary. Be, uh, well, otherwise, you know, I, I would I would probably figure out some way to work that smoker, and yeah. and I would probably find a few good restaurants, a few good Mexican restaurants in town, and uh, I would probably lose 15 pounds, and I can't afford to do right. that. Right. So, well, uh, you know. Thank, thank goodness for a team. Yeah. You you would probably learn how to cook rice. No, 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 I would take it out of one of those. Oh plastic yeah, bags. You, you know you can buy frozen. You can rice. now buy every yeah rice. already cooked. Already and you can rice. throw about you six throw potatoes. <laughs> you can put it in the oven, and that's your potatoes right there. But I, I have to add, there's one thing I do do. I I have three gardens, and uh, I grow. I probably got thirty tomato plants growing right now, which nobody could ever eat thirty. You know the problem, right. 30, 30 tomato plants. So what I do is, uh, as they ripen, as I uh, cut them up, and I, we have a dryer. We probably should have brought that up too. Well, a, de oh, a dehydrator. dehydrator. Yeah. yeah, a dehydrator. And so I take the tomatoes, dehydrate them, and uh, they last. We, we, in fact, we just uh, we just went through our last tomatoes from last season. And what Mary does is uh, takes scissors and cuts them up, puts them on what about half an hour beforehand. Uh, about a half an hour, an hour before before we're going to eat our, or some to reconstitute. Right, right. And um, easy, delicious. And the name of our dehydrator is Excalibur. Oh, Excalibur. Yeah. So if anybody wants to know, you can again, you can find them on Amazon. Right, just and about they come everything. In all different sizes. You know, wow. Three tray, five tray, nine tray. Exactly. And. Uh, well, we know that you both that eat very uh, simple and uh, maybe repeat meals often. Would you would you share just a few ideas, uh, Mary? That's a common question uh, among listeners. Uh, uh, she will tell you what we have every morning for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> we have oatmeal every morning for breakfast with blueberries. With blueberries, yeah, not uh -huh. my first choice, but but I but I do enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I, and in fact, I don't know what my first choice is. I guess it is my first choice. Well, no, I used to. If, if I if I feel ambitious, I'll I'll saute up some um, shredded frozen hash browns in one of those saute pans that I just showed you, and, right. and he likes that. And put some uh, sriracha sauce on it. Yeah. And, uh, there's some oil or fat-free barbecue sauces. Uh, you know, they most of them have sugar in them, but um, you can also put plain salsa. That you buy in the grocery store on top of that, and that that's a good meal. But you there you have to be you have to have a special a skill I think Mary to to do the potatoes like you do. Uh, we we just got back from the Alaska cruise. We talked about you know we went there a couple of weeks ago with a group of sixty two McDougal followers, and they just never got the hash browns right. They they uh, they, they overcooked them. Right. Like right. They wanted to get them brown, so they tended to overcook them, and they got too crispy. You have to get them just right. You do. But there is an art. I've been making <laughs> half brown potatoes for 40 years, so. That helps. <laughs> but it's true. You know, uh, basically, the breakfast is just oatmeal yeah. or hash browns. You know, and I'm sure then every now and then you might maybe you have pancakes or something like that when, when the once grandkids in a while. come once in a while. When the grandkids, when the are, grandkids over. Yeah. are over, otherwise, otherwise no. much trouble. Yeah. And uh, occasionally, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have a, a whole wheat bread that we buy from the bakery that's oil free, and I'll put a little bit of the jam on it. And uh, and occasionally I'll even put a little bit of natural peanut butter on it. Mm -hmm. But again, I, you know, neither Mary and I really need to lose any more weight. So, no, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> something I wouldn't recommend for those of you trying to lose weight. But uh, peanut butter, and, peanut, actually, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, especially for kids, they go over really well. Yeah, no butter, yeah. right? Um, but they are they are not uh, on the maximum weight loss program. And and then for our our dinner. Our simplest meals is the one that I just told you that I that we had last night. Is right. either potatoes cooked or 
um, microwave brown rice, um, and then with a different bean topping as a as a topping for it. And I just want to add, you don't have to add the beans for protein. They just they're just uh, very substantial in terms of being filling. They're very tasty, very familiar for people. Uh, so we gravitate towards uh, towards bean soups, which also have a lot of uh, vegetable matter in them also. And they and then of course the base of the meal would be the potatoes and the rice. You need to have that as a large part of your meal. Uh, and the bean type of uh, soup or stew that we're talking about is uh, something that is maybe half or less of what you're eating. Not that they're not good, but beans are you know are are they're very high in protein and uh, which is probably tolerated by most people. Uh, they, they're, they're good for weight loss. They're very good for satiety too. People get a lot of filling from eating things with beans. But I would, I would like you to really emphasize, particularly if you're trying to regain your health, get rid of your type two diabetes, lose weight, is to really emphasize that base of rice or potatoes or sweet potatoes or other types of grains and make sure that's a, a, a big bulk of your meal. Uh, uh, um, a meal could be as simple as a baked potato or two with some salsa over the top of it. The, or the grandkids really like sweet potatoes when they come over. In fact, they'll be over in about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Big smile. Uh, and uh, they, they'll have uh, uh, sweet potatoes and broccoli. Broccoli is what, yeah. And Mary will make sometimes a little a sauce for them, a peanut sauce. Dilute. Well, when I say peanut sauce, this brings up a lot of argument between Mary and I. Yeah. <laughs> so we, and we have peanut sauces that are made at our uh, at our clinic in Santa Rosa. Uh, occasionally, the chef really goofs it up, and it's, it's it's even though you use a special kind of peanut. I I use a special kind of dehydrated peanuts peanuts. It's called PB two, which has had the fat removed. And so what you do is you take out a scoop full of it. It tells you exactly how much on the jar. And you mix it with water until it becomes the consistency of peanut butter. Or less. But, the, well, that, but, but then you use that and you mix it with a liquid. Yeah, right. But that, that's what really bugs me at the clinic when they make it so thick. They make it so thick, yeah. And it, does, it doesn't taste better. It, it, in fact, it, uh, it's less palatable when you make it too thick. But we make it at the clinic uh, with a lot of liquid. And right, we, rice vinegar and um, balsamic vinegar a lot of times. Uh, just plain water mm -hmm. and um, some seasoning mixtures. Right. I have tried it. And it's, I can tell you, you can eat that by itself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know you can. You can drink it, could you? I don't <laughs> think that's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it goes over well. When we oh, serve yes. the sauce, it's usually the first sauce gone at the right, right, at, the, at the dinner table at the clinic. <laughs> uh, making so it too thick, thick is a mistake. You want to make it very thin. You want to use it sparingly because it is well. It doesn't have any fat, but it's pretty concentrated. Well, it has a. It has some fat. It has bit. had more. It's way less fat than regular peanut butter, but it, oh. there's still a little bit of fat in it. I think. Yeah. Right. What do I have hair and glasses? <laughs> <laughs> so any, any chance I get to touch her? <laughs> you, you don't you don't, <laughs> don't waste that, right? Yeah, right. Uh, very so basically that's uh, it's it's a very easy. You arrived at a point now where it's a very easy and simple way of eating. Yeah, I mean, we don't really even make bean burritos all that much anymore when we have company if we when we, when we, we have, have the guests. family over which is well, we have a nice sized family we have seven grandkids and that would make three children and their spouses and we get together a lot and what we do the go-to meal is bean burritos and mary will make the beans do you make them in the rice cooker you do it i you? make them in my slow uh, cooker, slow cooker in yeah. slow cooker and um and then we have uh, lettuce and tomatoes and various kinds of salsas and rice. Uh, so when our uh, daughter-in-law, uh, Craig's wife, many of them have met her, Mika, Mika McDougal, MD, family practitioner. Mm -hmm. When she's over, she makes a, a special rice. Uh, when puts uh, With some kind tomato of tomato sauce um, and seasonings, um, cumin, and things like that. And we'll, and we'll also have some guacamole. Again, you know, none of our family members really need to lose weight. 
uh, guacamole is, is a little bit of fat. I did mention a rice cooker. So I know you didn't bring one out, but a rice cooker is a pretty big deal, isn't it? For people. It is for people, but um, and there are so many different kinds. I have one that's called a... <laughs> Do they make any that are not Teflon? Coated? Yeah, I have a, I have a one that's ceramic. Okay, so there is one. Yeah, we try and we try and avoid the Teflon. We've used it for years because uh, I never I've never seen anybody die of Teflon poisoning, even though it is a poison. Right. Uh, but but they, I see people die of fat poisoning all the time, and we didn't have the alternative until now. We have these ceramic pans, so we don't recommend Teflon anymore. In fact, it was just a. Uh, uh, an alternative because we had no other options in the past for a nonstick uh, wear, but now we have the ceramic, so you want to get that. Right, instead. right. And you really have no problem using the microwave, do you? No, no. But we don't cook in it. That, that is, that is kind of that's in, in our cooking style. We really don't cook in it. No. What we do is just warm things, like we warm the rice or yeah. warm yeah. warm warm the water for uh, Dr. McDougall's soups, which we. We'll often have for lunch. Not that I'm trying to advertise, and they're not Dr. McDougall's perfect soups uh, uh, or foods. They're Dr. McDougall's right foods. And, uh, <laughs> they're the best, the best uh, cup package uh, uh, type of meal that you can find on the market. But if yeah. you're expecting perfection, then you have to do it at home. You really do. Right. Or find a, a great restaurant that's compliant. Yeah. Which but is not easy. Talk about rice cookers. Supposedly, in this instant pot, it it also cooks rice. And it has a stainless, right. stainless steel interior, so you don't really need to buy an extra rice cooker. You just buy one of these. It and really it is a wonderful appliance. It really does yeah. everything in one. Yeah. Uh, I, I recommend. Mary, can you tell us a little bit about how what you, what are the things that you keep on a regular basis in your in your food pantry? Things that you just cannot go without. Um, I always <laughs> have potatoes. I always have cooked rice in the freezer. I always have, or other cooked grains in the freezer. Um, I always have dried beans. I was going to say, if you looked in in our pantry, which is a very sizable room, you would find a shelf that has probably 10, ten different kinds of dried beans and peas mm -hmm. on the shelf that she uses. I in. always have canned tomatoes. Yeah. Um, and I always have some cans of cooked beans that have no oil or um, salt or anything added to them, just in case. And, uh, and the cans, do they shellac coat them? Or they do. They have they have a, some kind of a coating inside so that um, the, you don't get tin or lead tin, poisoning. Yeah. Or, <laughs> not lead poisoning anymore, but it used to be a problem with cans. It's, right. So, right. So it protects them from the metal. And, and a lot of the things we have are also in jars. And we also yeah. always have sriracha sauce. We always have sriracha. You can eat cardboard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it makes it. If you think your meal isn't tasting good, uh, there are two things you can do. One is add salt to the surface of the food, unless you are one of those rare salt sensitive people. And you can always add sriracha. You can make anything if you like that kind of flavoring, taste good of the sriracha, or maybe there's another flavoring you might yeah, like. Well, I mean, I always have this seasoning mixture in my pantry. Right. I always have greens, except right now I have greens growing in my garden, so I don't have to buy them. They'd be in the refrigerator. They'd be in the refrigerator. Um, we always have bananas. Yeah, I was gonna say, well, we also have fruit. Right now, raspberries are in season, so Heather just brought us this, Heather's our daughter, and most of you know that. Uh, who runs all the programs. Um, she's not really a child anymore. She's 40 <laughs> plus years old. And she brought us uh, the raspberry bushes. No, blackberries. Blackberries. Blackberry blackberry bushes. From their yard. Yeah, and they're, and they're having um, uh, some of their fruit trees come in. We have, yeah. an, we have an apple tree. We have a tangerine tree. We have a fig tree that doesn't bloom because it doesn't get enough sun. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, 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 loquats. We have loquats. so many loquats, please. If, if you could send me a box, I would send you a, a dozen <laughs> loquats. We have so many loquat trees in our yard. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah. So we have, we have quite a bit of fruit in our diet. It's just randomly added. Right. You know, right. It's not usually part of a meal, like a dessert, which it could be for you, but it's something to walk by food who would just grab and eat. 
And uh, so I would say, you know, maybe 10, 10% of our diet is fruit every day just because it's there and it's yeah. something to snack on. Right. And dry fruits would work too. Uh, they're not great for losing weight, but that would work for you. Yeah. Exactly. Well, very good. Very good. This is very, very useful. And people are asking things about, for example, how to find a dietitian that is plant-based. I don't know if you have any. No, dietitian. Dietitian, don't. Dietitian. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't need that. Uh, this is people ask about, uh, I need to find a doctor who um, eats well. You don't, you don't want to find a doctor who eats well. You don't need that. You don't need that information. Uh, you have gotten all that information free from our website. Uh, nobody's going to tell you anything different. Uh, the interesting thing about what I've been doing for 40 years now is no one has ever questioned to me personally that I can recall ever question uh, anything I've said in terms of nutrition or medicine behind my back. They may say lots of things. Uh, they've never questioned the adequacy of the diet uh, or nor the recommendations I give you on conservative medical care. I would ask you to find a, if you need to have a doctor, which hopefully you don't, uh, but to find a doctor who's very conservative about recommending tests and treatments and somebody you can talk to and that it doesn't have a, a rude attitude about, uh, hey, wait a minute, when did you go to medical school? I'm the doctor here. You don't want that kind of a relationship. As far as a dietitian, I, I don't, I can't think of any reason you'd need a dietitian unless you had something special wrong. Like, for example, if you had kidney disease, you'd want to have a renal dietitian. But unfortunately, I have never met a renal dietitian who knew anything proper about <laughs> how to feed a kidney patient. So th that's, that's the problem. There are some good dietitians out there that are general dietitians, which teach a similar message to what we do. Jill Nusenau is uh, one, and you could probably think of uh, Hever. Oh, Julianne, Julianne Heaver. Julianne Heaver. Yeah, there are some good dietitians out there. In fact, there are more and more coming and more and more uh, physicians who are good physicians that are understanding proper nutrition and conservative medical care. But uh, as far as learning uh, something new or special about what you need, you're a human being. Human beings have a diet. It's a starch-based diet of fruits and vegetables. Uh, just like if you had a a dog, you could look up on the internet what dogs are supposed to eat. There's probably a little disagreement. Yeah, but there are a little, there's a little disagreement. These and days. the cat, I know there's I know there's a good diet for cats. It's called dead animals, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, dogs are omnivores. I'm I'm pretty sure of that. So you could probably feed them all your leftovers and your neighbors' leftovers. Uh, they, they pretty much can eat anything. Well, anyway, there uh, I can tell you that I believe and have not changed my mind, and I think that's to my credit, for 40 years, I, I teach the same thing. You know, you're supposed to eat starch, vegetables, and fruit. You know, that's it. You can get away with some treats once in a while. Most of you can. And you choose your own poisons uh, as far as your treats. You don't need a dietitian to choose how to <laughs> <laughs> to choose them for you. But if you have any special needs, I, and again, uh, probably a renal dietitian for somebody with kidney failure, if they were well trained, could do you a lot of good. I, I, I don't, I wouldn't give you any different diet for type two diabetes or type one diabetes or uh, atherosclerosis, you know, angina or plugged arteries. I wouldn't give you any different diet for cancer. Uh, It'd be, it would be something like when you were on a dialysis machine or re, you know, really had that severe kidney failure. Uh, well, no, that's not, I, I would correct that a little bit. If you had very severe heart failure, uh, I think you could get some good counseling about eating uh, lower protein and lower salt. But these, again, are things that are on the website. If you just go to search and you put in kidney disease, there's a whole article I did on diet and kidneys. And probably get enough information from that and then share it with the dietitian and see if it all applies to you. Right. Yeah, we have a list, I think, on our website. Of oh, yes. People that have, have registered um, that are plant-based, and so you can actually check out in your area um, doctors that are plant-based. Well, we have two lists. We have two lists. We have one list of people who have taken the start certification course. And so we give them a certification certificate that says they've taken the course. It doesn't mean that they're practicing that kind of medicine or, uh, you know, they're going to do what Dr. McDougall and Mary McDougall suggest you should do. But they have at least read the material 
and passed a test that says that they know what we would believe. And then we have another list of doctors in communities around the world on the site. And uh, they are doctors that have been recommended by other people, not by us, but doctors that, that they found in their city that, um, that they particularly liked uh, for one reason or another, because they were conservative, they were nice, they wore well-tailored suits. I don't know, <laughs> no. uh, but they're not uh, recommended. No, but they tell what, what kind of a physician they are and whether they, they are plant-based. What or, their experience has yeah. been. So you can get a little bit of help in terms of, uh, of direction, but don't, don't take either of these lists as, uh, as uh, us certifying that they're going to practice the medicine that we suggest. The only, the only way that you can get the kind of medicine that we suggest is you can come to the 10 day program. You know, that's where I and uh, Dr. Anthony Lim practice medicine, who you're going to have on in a couple of weeks. But the 20, right. 28th, I think Dr. Lim will be on. Yeah. Have a great yeah. experience with Dr. Lim. So, uh, other than the two of us at our clinic, uh, and I suppose I have to support my son. You do. Craig, right. you do. Exactly. You would give me <laughs> you know, let me just make, make, make a mention here. Now that we're talking about other doctors that I've had the chance to be of some influence on, uh, we're going to have the advanced study weekend, which I think is the 16th, 18th. I think so, yes. So, and, and you want to sign up uh, for the advanced study weekend because I'm going to do a special, a special thing. I'm going to have four, physici four physicians, younger doctors. People say, what's going to happen to you when you get old, which I think happened, and, or <laughs> when you die, which fortunately is not close. <laughs> I'm going to ha I, I've had a chance to train four doctors who I can tell you are great physicians. They're young doctors. Uh, they're um, not directly Tom Campbell, but he has learned a lot from me. That's, uh, uh, that's T. Colin Campbell's son. He's going to be at the Advanced Study Weekend. Matt Letterman, who works in Los Angeles and works with Whole Foods and has a medical clinic in Los Angeles uh, based with Whole Foods. Uh, Matt Letterman will be there. Uh, Anthony Lim, who uh, works with me and also at True North. And I, I can assure you, Dr. Lim, even though there are a few things the old man still has to teach him, is a really good doctor. And, and also Craig McDougall, my son, likewise, I've had a great influence on him. So those four young doctors are going to be there along with their fathers who are physicians, or in the case of, uh, of uh, uh, Tom Campbell, it's T. Colin Campbell, who's the world's greatest nutritionist. So we're going to have the four of them present at the Advanced Study Weekend uh, a lecture, uh, which will be very interesting. I've heard I've heard the lectures; they're phenomenal. So these four young doctors are going to be talking uh, on Saturday afternoon, and then we're going to be having a, a general discussion where the dads, <laughs> myself, T. Colin Campbell, uh, Steve uh, Letterman. And was uh, a cardiologist. Cardiolog She's a cardiologist, by the way, who was on our Alaska trip, and I gave my lecture on cardiology. And he's an interventional cardiologist, Dr. Letterman's uh, dad. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And when I got done, I said, well, I know I presented this lecture with enthusiasm, but I said, tell the audience, did I say anything that's incorrect? Which are the things that I've told you, that this intervention cardiology in chronic disease does not save lives, and half the people who go to the hospital for non cardiac problems uh, surgical before they have surgery, they they have uh, stents put in. And I, and I talked all about the Alaska trip and uh, Steve uh, uh, Letterman, MD cardiologist. Uh, uh, the audience asked him, "Is what Dr. McDowell said true?" And he said, "Yep, <laughs> it's true." Mm -hmm. Anyway, he'll be there uh, along with uh, Dr. Lim's dad, who is a I think OBGYN doctor. But they're all physicians. Uh -huh. uh, we're going to take in that discussion, and we're going to give a little presentation about what we think about our, our sons, and then we're going to grill them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that ought to be really interesting. And we're going to do that on Saturday afternoon. Uh, we're also having uh, Susan Roberts, who's a, uh, a PhD, and she works for Tufts. Uh, she works uh, for their. Uh, well, she, she has a lot, a lot of credentials, but her research is on aging and also on various kinds of diets. Susan Roberts is gonna be there. She, she's talking on Saturday morning. And uh, then we have John Mandrola, MD, who's a, a cardiologist who has great interest in nutrition, but he also has interest in atrial fibrillation and other cardiac diseases. I mean, this is a really top-notch, world-famous cardiologist. So he'll be there uh, in the morning. And um, 
then Dean Ornish will be speaking on Sunday. And uh, let's see. Oh, Nelson Campbell of uh, Plant, 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 uh, Plant Nation. Or, uh, oh, 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 yeah. yeah I, so I think I remember. Nelson Campbell will be there speaking on, uh, on all the wonderful work he's doing in the new documentary. And that's our list of speakers for the advanced study weekend. I encourage you to sign up early. I have no doubt that it will sell out as they always do. Uh, we really need to tell people that um, they can sign up for this on your website, right. drmcdougall.com. And to remind everyone that last week we did a webinar with you, Dr. McDougall, talking about all the free benefits on your website because people are asking questions here i see a lot of questions but most of the questions here are already answered on your website if they use the search function there oh. they will find just about everything it's like the instant pot the, it is you it find will, everything there the search function is, is <laughs> fabulous you just you just type you know hit the search button and a little box pops up it's great and you put in what you want to know and you get the answer right plus, plus you can also watch last week's webinar for free on the website right yeah. where we discussed how to search the whole website yes that's what i wanted to to, to encourage people to go to last week and see that because uh, there is a that, that was a great webinar there's a lot of benefit there dr mcdougall a quick question about someone asking what do you suggest for someone who, who has low iron levels well the first thing you want to do about low iron levels you want to make sure you're not bleeding you know, some people have bleeding from the bowels that they don't notice. Uh, women uh, in their reproductive years can have excessive bleeding uh, from the uterus. And uh, if you have bleeding post reproductive years, post menopause, that's always of concern. Uh, so you wanna make sure you don't have a source of bleeding number one and uh, find, you know, make sure there's not an underlying <coughs> problem that needs to be treated. and. Uh, the second thing that causes anemia, the second most common thing, particularly in children, is cow's milk. It's called Heiner's syndrome. It accounts for most of the anemia in children. What happens is the uh, calcium and phosphorus in the milk complexes iron from other foods like green beans or beef, and it forms insoluble complexes so they don't absorb the iron. And also the cow's milk causes uh, uh, in bleeding of the intestine in the child. And you can't cure it unless you take the kid off the milk. You can give them iron pills, you can give them blood transfusions. It was it's incurable. We've known about this for maybe a hundred years. Uh, it's a reaction to cow's milk. And so, of course, no kid should be consuming cow's milk. You know that. And that's the second thing you ought to think about in a child or an adult as a cause of anemia. There's also runner's anemia, or we don't know exactly what the cause is. Maybe by hitting the pavement with your feet, you may take and you rupture the red blood cells and sometimes runners become anemic. Uh, that would be low iron. You'd end up with low iron. <clears throat> and as far as taking iron supplements, uh, I, I almost never prescribe iron supplements. I look for the cause. The diet that we uh, teach is uh, high in iron and becomes very absorbable, the iron does, because of the uh, ascorbic acid uh, that's uh, present with our citrus fruits. So you get all the iron you need from the food. You don't need any particular supplementation. There are, of course, always exceptions where, you, you know, you might find, I, I can't think of any right now, but you might find a need to add extra iron. You're going to suffer from constipation and black stools from it. And iron is an oxidant. So taking iron chronically may increase the risk of uh, heart disease and possibly other oxidant-related diseases. Just to add a thought, which I really, you know, how I get carried away, but... Uh, <laughs> One of the beliefs as to why women have less heart disease during their menstrual years is because they chronically lose iron in their periods. And the other thing that was, has been noted is that people who uh, give blood transfusions or blood donors, they have less heart disease. Now that could be because blood donors are more uh, conscientious people who pay more attention to everything in life, including their diet. But that has been uh, the reason given for why uh, some people have uh, less heart diseases because they constantly lose iron 
like as iron's an oxidant, you know, antioxidants prevent heart disease. Just a little theory that uh, may or may not be true, but I think is interesting. <laughs> Very interesting, yes. Um, and and I want to ask you a, a, a question about social life because this is one topic that we're going to talk about next week with Dr. Doug Lyle. Social life, what's that, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> we have no social life. Uh, uh, yeah. Mother. We have each other. We have the kids. Why bother? Well, you know, people here are asking what happens when when this way of eating is hurting their social life or they get negative reactions from yeah. people. That's exactly what we're going to talk about next week with Dr. Lyle, and he has some great suggestions. Yes, but what is your experience? Uh, do, do you want to start on that, Mary? Because we're, we have discussed this in great detail, even though, like I say, Mary and I spend most of our time with our family, and we're really busy working. Our social life is mainly with our, our coworkers and, uh, and our patients. Our, our patients become our friends. And we have a few other uh, friends on the outside, but uh, <clears throat> most of them eat the same way yeah, they, we they, do, and or they expect us to eat that way. You you have to admit, um, nobody is going to invite Dr. McDougall and his wife over to their house for dinner, <laughs> and not serve them something that we could eat. So we don't we unfortunately we don't run into that that same problem that other people do, um, but we do hear about it a lot at at the program because people focus so much on food and they their and, their and social it's, it's, situation it's rude, is, rude to not you know it is just be invited over to somebody's house and refuse to eat what they serve yeah. it would be very hard for us you know, to go over to somebody's house and have them serve pork chops I, you know i wouldn't eat it uh i don't know how i deal with it but fortunately i don't have to uh, some of the things that we've talked about in the past is to inform people you know friends look this is the way we eat. Uh, it's doctor's orders. You know, I'll die, which is true if I eat the other way. So uh, I realize you would like to have us over for dinner, but instead, uh, uh, could we just uh, get together for some type of beverages or some other activity that didn't involve food unless, unless uh, you know, we can tell you what we do eat or you would allow us to bring over a dish and share uh, you can do that always at potlucks. When people go to potlucks uh, who follow our diet, whatever dish they bring, they always tell us that's the first dish gone in the potluck. It's true. Line. So yeah. you can you can do that. Um, I, if they're really friends, I mean, if they're really friends, they're going to respect you for your health issues. Uh, if they're not really friends. Well, well they, they tend to feel threatened. That's true. People feel threatened by you're, you know, you're thinking you're better, you're better than I am. I think you have to have some frank discussions with them, <clears throat> or you're going to have to say, well, you know, this is the night I eat pork chops. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, uh, right. Most it's likely totally... you won't die from one evening and eating fried chicken. Uh, I, I personally would find it repulsive to do. It would be, you know, it's something that I would find disgusting, like asking me to eat I'm not going to say what. what, 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 what nice. <laughs> you know, asking me to eat a dog. Right. You know, that would be the thing. If I was in some other parts of the world and I went out to somebody's house for dinner, they would serve a dog. Or when we went to Peru, we took a group to guinea Peru. pigs. Guinea pigs. There were, there were guinea pigs running all over these people's houses. And I said, well, why do you keep all these guinea pigs? Well, <laughs> well, uh, we eat them. There are a lot of things that I think you can relate to as being disgusting, too, that you wouldn't want to eat. Right. Uh, we just got back from Alaska to eat a whale. Uh, to eat a whale, that, that would be so uh, ethically and morally uh, repulsive to me. But there are other people, uh, people today in Japan and in other parts of the world, that eat these animals. Right. So... <clears throat> No, you, you have to, I guess, deal with it from your own personal point of view. One, one other big hint I would give you is if you're invited over to somebody's house for dinner or out to dinner, eat first. Yeah, <laughs> Eating that's hungry true. is a hard, that is true. a hard thing to do when you're presented with food that you may not have gotten over completely. Uh, so if you eat a, a, a nice big meal before you go out with friends <clears throat> or over to their house, you can kind of pick around the salad and the potatoes and not make too big a deal about it. Right, right. Yeah, those are really good suggestions. Like, um, 
I look forward to hearing Dr. Lyle next week because oh, he, has, he has some great ideas. He has some great ideas. So everybody go to the website and register for next week. You will really enjoy that. And uh, Dr. McDougall and Mary, we're getting close to the end of the webinar. I don't know if you wanted to add anything else. Um, otherwise, we'll just close. Uh, let's see. I, 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 you know, as always, I'd like to tell you about our activities. <clears throat> yes, please do. We've, we've emphasized over and over again: everything you need is free on the website. Recipes, instructions, all of the uh, the things that I know about in terms of disease, conservative therapy, <clears throat> screening, and so on. It's all free. So there's really no financial excuse for you not doing what we suggest, including all the webinars and and uh, lectures that I've done and our guests have done, they're all free on the website. But uh, we also run programs where we get a chance to make friends, <laughs> make new <laughs> friends. We just made, we had so much fun with these oh, 60, we, and, we uh, these people in Alaska, uh, I, I know that if you talk to every one of them, that they would say that John and Mary McDougall are our friends. And uh, this is a, one of the, what we, usually we have, we, we draw out the nicest people and bring out the best in them. Uh, but occasionally there's somebody who comes who's not a very happy person and they spread that unhappiness. But we didn't have one of those on uh, this past Alaska trip. <clears throat> I, I do want you to know that we have a trip into going to Kauai in January, the end of January. The end of January, of January 28th. And uh, I do know that you sold out of rooms. Uh, I'm so I, I've sold out of rooms three times already and Usually when I call the hotel, they say, well, we have a couple more rooms, yeah. um, but we're getting close to the limit. So if you're mm -hmm. interested in going. Yeah, now's, now's the time to sign up, not to wait till September. And the reason we're going back to Kauai, the Sheraton, is because they did the best food we've ever had. And we've, we've been doing yeah. well, uh, these type of adventure trips. We've been doing it for oh, almost 30 years. And the, the best food ever served at any adventure trip was the Sheraton Kauai uh, in mm -hmm. last year. Last yeah, about what town, what town is it in? Poipu. Poipu. Poipu and the beach, phenomenal. The beach right next door right is the most the beautiful hotel. beach. And we have a lot of adventures planned, uh, garden trips, flume trips, uh, canopy trips. Canopy trips, um, kayaking. Okay. okay. Um, and, and you'll find that the nicest people there, there's probably there's over 90 coming. I think so. Over 90 so far. We'll That's probably cool. have 100, 110 people there and you'll make new friends and you will not feel like it's crowded or, or uh, impersonal because of the nature of the people there and the staff that we have. Uh, we've had trips as many as 150 people. <clears throat> so we'll likely have 100, 110 people coming. But Mary's going to, uh, it's just to the point where she's about to run out of room. So we want you to know about the Kauai trip. We have an August 10 day program where Dr. Lim and I, I see all the patients. Uh, I have no plans on not seeing the patients, but we've added a tremendous amount in terms of physician care by adding Dr. Anthony Lim to the program. People think that uh, somehow we lessened the program by adding another doctor. I have no doubt everybody who's been to the program both with me alone or with me, me and Dr. Lim or just had the experience with Dr. Lim would say, it was an amazing, well, you know, Dr. Lim. Yes, oh yeah, that's wonderful. So we have a program in August, I don't know what the date is, but it's a 10 day program. It's the last 10 day program we have until December. Until December, yes. And the reason is, is we're doing a whole bunch of private programs for businesses. We weren't able to schedule public programs. In October. In October, October September, November. October, and November. Well, September we have um, the advanced study. Right, but there's no 10-day programs. No 10-day. Right. There's no medically supervised programs where we take you off you you off all your unnecessary drugs, and uh, give you all the personal attention you want. The only one is in August or next December. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're tied up with uh, a, a couple of big businesses and running programs for their employees. And then we have the advanced study weekend. Yeah. Right. Well, wonderful. Yeah, that's a lot of activities. We're, we're, Mary and I are busy every month. We're in addition to having fun with the webinar and, and writing the newsletter and uh, writing I, books. And, and now, I, now I'm going to learn how to use my instant pot. Not the instant pot, yes. <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Maitugal, let me take a, uh, just a couple of seconds here to show people really quick the website 
uh, let's see if I can show it here, because people are asking about the Mary's Mini, and I just want them to know that we did a whole webinar on Mary's Mini, and Mary, unless there is a change or an addition to the way that Mary's Mini work. Not, not since we did the webinar. Okay, look, everybody, right here, you go to education, live with Dr. McDougall's online webinars, and then here are all the webinars that we have done. And uh, one of these here, I, I just don't want I to- I see it, um, 3-24-16. Okay, right there, everybody. Mary's Mini, if you click on that, we did a whole webinar on that topic. And um, so I'll, uh, I, I just don't wanna have to repeat this same thing. Right, there's uh, also, they can put in the search engine and they can probably put in the Mary's Mini Diet. Yeah, they can also they, go to Hot. They can, but <clears throat> the Mary's Mini, the webinar is much better. Than well, that's because it had you live. <laughs> right, it had you in it. Uh, but uh, so but there's I, also a, um, if you go to Hot Topics and you look under nutrition and obesity, it's listed there. It's very easy to find. Essentially, it's just a monotonous diet that's very nutritionally adequate and uh, it appeals to some people because it, it's simple, it's monotonous, uh, it feels like a diet to them right, rather right. than a lifestyle program. It's something they're doing to get really quick results. Right. So uh, it's, it's meant to be for, for, a, for a short period of time, right? Well, you, it was written for that in mind, but it's very nutritionally adequate, and you can do it forever. Very good, very good. So no, no major changes that you would add, Mary, to. No, to, uh, no, that. it's just the McDougal diet simplified. Simple, really, to, to, really simple to the point of boredom and monotony. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but just, people like there are a lot of people who would like that. Right, right. Yeah, Let me I, put it this way. You can live on sweet potatoes and water and you figure out what, what's really going on, or potatoes and water. Or you can't eat grains and legumes alone. You have to add a little bit of fruit, a little bit of vegetable. But underground storage organs, roots, those kinds of things, tubers, uh, you can live on those in water alone. They're perfectly adequate in terms of all your nutrients, except for B12, which is a whole other subject we can do someday. Right. <laughs> well... Thank you again. This has been fun. just very fun to be with you. I feel like I've been there in the same room with you. And yeah. all of this, uh, it's been great. And uh, I look forward to two weeks from today. See you, Dr. McDougall. Yes, I, guess, I think I'm going to do... Well, we already decided what we're going to do. We decided. I think do this... a, a thing on abuse of patients and abuse of children. Yes. We're going to do that, and then in a, a couple of weeks after that, the next newsletter I'm going to write on is going to be about colon cancer screening. At least that's what I plan right now. I, I, I All right. Start it until, uh, for a, a week or two, but uh, I think I'm going to do an update on colon cancer screening for the newsletter, and then we'll do that sometime in the future. We'll right. be working on that. But we're going to do we're going to do a, a talk about how the medical profession abuses people. In general, there are exceptions and also how society in general abuses children yes civilized people care for their children in our society our children are obese and sick and i'm going to probably be in my, my usual form <laughs> yeah so this is going to be a very passionate uh, apologetic no right there is no apologetics when it comes to taking care of our kids. And that also touches me because I've been working with kids almost all my life and it's outrageous. Uh, next week we have Dr. Lyle. So everybody will see you then. And we'll see you Dr. McDougall in two weeks. And thank you again, Mary, for gracefully oh, thank accepting. You. Right. Thank you. It's a good time. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye.